Welcome, fellow seekers of serenity and wisdom, to another journey into the heart of Stoicism. In today's world, where the hustle and bustle often sweep us off our feet, we'll explore how the ancient practice of Stoicism can be our anchor, keeping us calm amidst the stormy seas of life. If you're ready to unlock the secrets to tranquility and sagacity, you're in the right place. And hey, if you find value in our time together today, show some love by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and ringing that notification bell, so you never miss out on the insights that could very well transform your life. Now, let's set sail, and delve into the timeless wisdom of Stoicism, where the art of remaining unshaken by life's ups and downs, is not just a philosophy, but a way of living. As we unbox Stoicism, like a treasured gift from the ancient world, picture this, it's the early 3rd century BC, and, in the bustling heart of Athens, Zeno of Citium, a man shipwrecked with nothing but ideas, launched a school of thought that would withstand the test of time. It's like he slipped on a banana peel of fate and landed on a gold mine of wisdom. Stoicism set its roots among stores, or painted porches where thinkers would stroll and discourse. Imagine these stores as the original walk and talk YouTube channels, minus the annoying ads and buffering issues. Now, let's meet the all-stars of Stoicism. First up, we have Seneca, a man so multifaceted, he could have been a philosophy Swiss army knife. He juggled roles as a statesman, dramatist, and advisor to the notorious Emperor Nero. Talk about playing with fire and not getting burned. Seneca's letters and essays are like life hacks for the soul, timeless advice that applies whether you're facing a lion in the Colosseum or just your cat who has decided your keyboard, is the perfect napping spot. Next we have Epictetus, a former slave turned influential philosopher, who basically said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react that matters. He taught his students to focus on what's in their power, and let go of what isn't, like how you can't control the weather, but you can pack an umbrella. Epictetus kept it real, proving that wisdom often comes from the most unexpected places like the diamond in the rough of life's adversities. Lastly, we have the philosopher king himself, Marcus Aurelius. Picture him, the head honcho of the Roman Empire, sitting in his tent, jotting down meditations on life while battles raged on. Talk about multitasking under pressure. His personal reflections became a survival guide to not losing your cool when everything's falling apart around you, a text so popular it could top the bestseller lists, if they'd had them back in ancient Rome. So, what do these Stoic superstars have in common? They laid the groundwork for a philosophy that says, life will throw you curveballs, but hey, keep your eye on the ball and swing with virtue, resilience, and a touch of indifference to things beyond your control. They turned the art of being chill and wise into a science, one we can still study and apply today. And just like unboxing the latest gadget, Discovering Stoicism gets you excited to play with its features in the game of life. Remember, if you're enjoying this historical stroll down philosophy lane, consider joining our modern-day Stoa by subscribing for more inspiring content. Now, ready to dive deeper into the Stoic way of life? Stay tuned as we navigate through the practical applications of their teachings in our everyday hustle. With a Stoic mindset who knows, you might just become the eye of the hurricane a beacon of calm in a world of chaos. So, diving into the Stoic mindset, let's peel back the layers of this profound philosophy to reveal its foundational principles. It's a bit like finding the cheat codes to life, and who wouldn't want that? At the core of Stoicism, there's this radical idea, some things are within our control, and some are not. Now, let's pause and think about that over a cup of coffee or tea, whichever you fancy. It sounds simple, right? But in practice, it's like building mental muscle at the gym of life. Picture yourself scrolling through your social media feed, and you come across someone living your dream life. It's easy to feel a pang of jealousy, but here's where the stoic flexes. You can't control the curated highlight reels of others, but you can control how you respond. Whether you choose to feel envious or motivated, there's your stoic power. Up. Another pillar of Stoicism is the pursuit of virtue. It's the ultimate high score. Seneca would say that being a good person, doing the right thing, is all that matters. 
even when no one's looking. Remember that time you found a wallet and returned it, despite being tempted by the wad of cash inside? That's the stoic in you, choosing virtue over vice, integrity over instant gratification. But wait, it's not all serious business. Stoics also have a sense of humor. Imagine that Pictetus at a stand-up comedy show. He'd probably quip if you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. That's stoicism with a wink. It's recognizing that sometimes, you've got to embrace the awkward, the mistakes, and the learning curve. It's okay to be the butt of the joke if it means growing wiser. And let's not forget about Marcus Aurelius, the stoic, who had everything but still understood the value of nothing. In the midst of luxury, he chose simplicity, echoing the modern minimalist movement that's like the Spotify of lifestyle. Streamlined and without the clutter, he'd probably say, you could leave life right now, so let that determine what you do, say and think. That's vintage stoicism, reminding us to live each day as if it's our finale, to appreciate the now, because life doesn't have a replay button. So, as we navigate our own epic quests, these stoic teachings can be our roadmap to remaining unfazed by the dragons of doubt and the trolls of turmoil. Keeping a cool head and a wise heart isn't just ancient history, it's a fresh way to face the modern world, the stoic app update we all need. Stay tuned fellow philosophers, as we venture further into the practical applications of stoicism. Keep practicing that mental workout, and soon you might just be the calm and wise guru in your own story, the one others look to when the going gets tough. Remember, subscribe and join our community if you're ready to arm yourself with stoicism and become a modern-day warrior of well-being. The next segment holds even more stoic secrets, so don't go anywhere. Your journey to mastering calm and wisdom is just beginning. And now, dear friends, Let's take a breath and step into the stoic serene garden of tranquility. Why, you might ask, does calmness matter? In the cacophony of modern life, being calm is like having a superpower, the kind that lets you wade through the noise with a zen-like stride. It's not just about being cool in the face of chaos, it's about discovering a sense of inner peace that's as refreshing as a breeze in the middle of a heat wave. Think of it this way, if life were a video game, Tranquility would be that elusive power-up that keeps your health bar maxed out, no matter how many enemy attacks you face. And Stoicism, that's the strategy guide to finding and keeping that power up. Seneca, with his razor-sharp wit, might have posted a tweet saying, Life is like a play. It's not the length, but the excellence of the acting that matters. In our terms, it's not about dodging every obstacle. Good luck with that. It's about rolling with the punches with grace and ease. Take a moment and picture yourself in a traffic jam, late for an important meeting. The old you might have turned into a horn honking road, rage, fueled mess, but the new, stoic you. You're the embodiment of chill, using the time to listen to a podcast or just enjoying some unexpected knee, time. That's right, you've become the master of your reactions, and suddenly, the traffic isn't the problem. It's just a plot twist in your day. So why does Stoicism place such a hefty bet on calmness? Because tranquility is the bedrock upon which you can build a fortress of wisdom. It's about being an oasis of composure in a desert of hurry and worry. And trust me, that level of cool is contagious. You'll be like that one friend everyone wants at their dinner party. The one who doesn't flinch when the suffle collapses or the dog tips over the wine. Now. Let's sprinkle in some humor because even the Stoics' new life isn't just a toga party of solemn thoughts. Imagine Marcus Aurelius, after a tough day of emperoring, saying, He who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at. Even while running an empire, he understood that a light heart can carry the heaviest burdens. When your Wi-Fi goes down in the middle of a binge, watch, instead of erupting like a volcano, channel your inner Marcus and laugh at the irony of the universe's timing. It's like the cosmos is saying, hey, isn't it time you read a book? Embracing tranquility is about reveling in life's absurdities, not just enduring them. It's about mastering the art of living, where you're not just surviving the waves but surfing them with a smile. In the next segment, we'll take the lessons of stoicism off the page and into the pavement, showing you how to walk the stoic walk in your daily hustle. So grab a cup of coffee or tea. 
whichever floats your philosophic boat, and settle in as we translate ancient wisdom into modern-day magic. Remember to subscribe to stay up to date with all the stoic secrets that await, because the journey to mastering calm and wisdom is well underway, and trust me you don't want to miss a single step. Life is peppered with decisions, some as trivial as buying groceries, others as pivotal as choosing a career. That's where practical wisdom swoops in and saves the day. The Stoics had a term for it, phrenesis, the kind of savvy that can't be learned from books alone. It's gained through experience and reflection. It's the difference between knowing that honey is sweet and tasting it for yourself. Seneca, who could navigate the treacherous political waters of ancient Rome like a pro, showed us that practical wisdom is about making choices with both the heart and the head, he once said, while we teach we learn. Proving that wisdom grows with each decision, like accruing interest in a bank account of the mind. His life, rife with moral dilemmas, is a testament to how practical wisdom can turn even the stickiest situation into a learning opportunity. Then there's Epictetus, the sage who embodied practical wisdom by transforming his life from slave to stoic heavyweight. He taught that it's not about the hand you're dealt, but how you play your cards. His wisdom was not the kind that sits on a dusty shelf, it's the kind you carry in your pocket, a Swiss army knife for the soul, ready to deploy at life's crossroads. And let's muse over Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher king who wielded wisdom like a scepter. He knew that each decision carved the empire's fate, and his meditations serve up practical wisdom, like a banquet of thoughtful morsels. He famously said, the best revenge, is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. That's stoic wisdom in action, a guide to rising above pettiness and choosing the high road, even when the low road is calling your name with a megaphone. As we wade through the quagmire of choices in our lives, practical wisdom is the torchlight that reveals the path ahead, not by eliminating the shadows but by teaching us to navigate them with finesse. Whether you're deciding to splurge on that gadget or save for a rainy day, whether you're contemplating a job offer or a breakup, Stoicism's wisdom whispers in your ear, urging you to weigh your decisions on the scales of virtue and long-term happiness. Embrace the wisdom of the Stoics, and you'll find yourself not just making decisions, but crafting a masterpiece of a life, one choice at a time. And as we continue this Stoic journey together, remember to hit that subscribe button for more pearls of wisdom that can turn the ordinary act of decision-making into an extraordinary exercise in practical wisdom. Stay tuned, for there's still much to learn from the Stoics, their philosophy not just a lantern in the dark, but a lighthouse for all seasons of the soul, as we've seen. The Stoic approach to life is akin to having a Swiss army knife for the mind. It's packed with tools to tackle the highs and lows with equal grace, and central to wielding this mental multi-tool is the power of perception. Think of perception as the lens through which you view the world, a lens that can be polished to such clarity that even the muddiest waters can see. Crystal clear, the Stoics understood that life isn't just about what happens to us, but how we perceive and react to those happenings. It's like wearing a pair of spectacles with reality, correcting glasses. When someone cuts you off in traffic, you can either see a personal slight or simply a person in a rush, much like you on a different day. Seneca, ever the astute observer of the human condition, might have compared our reactions to echoes in a vast canyon. Shout anger and anger bounces back, holler joy and joy returns. He taught that if we choose our shouts wisely, we craft the echoes of our lives. Imagine a day where every interaction is met with a stoic whisper of understanding rather than a knee-jerk scream of frustration. That's perception at work, altering the soundscape of your existence. Epictetus, the man who turned adversity into strength, had his own take on perception. He likened it to picking out clothes. Every morning we have the choice to dress our minds in worry or wrap them in confidence, to button up in bitterness or cloak ourselves in contentment. Perception is that wardrobe of the mind, and stoicism is the personal stylist ensuring you're dressed for success, no matter the occasion. And Marcus Aurelius, perhaps the ultimate stoic stylist, Recognize that life's events are neutral, they don't come pre-packaged with stress or serenity, that's added by our perceptions, you have power over your mind, not outside events, he noted. 
Realize this, and you will find strength. Think of his words next time you're fumbling with life's uncontrollable aspects. It's not the events that need handling, but the perception goggles through which you view them. So as we swirl in this whirlpool of life, remember the Stoic's power of perception is your flotation device. You control the rudder of your mind and can steer through rocky waters, not with brute force, but with the gentle touch of a seasoned captain. Shift your perception, and you transform obstacles into opportunities. A flat tire isn't a curse, but a chance to learn a new skill, a job loss, an opening for a new career path, heartbreak, the fertile soil for personal growth. But don't just take it from me. Try out this power, up for yourself. Next time something seemingly negative occurs, pause, take a deep breath, and adjust your perception goggles. You might just find that what once seemed like a series of unfortunate events, is instead a narrative of growth and self-discovery. Embrace this stoic game, changer, and you'll start to see the world, not as a gauntlet of trials, but as a landscape of enlightenment. The stoic power of perception, is a tool that remains razor sharp across the centuries, from the stoas of Athens, to the screens before us. If you're ready to find, tune your lens and view life through a wiser, calmer filter, make sure to subscribe and join our community. The journey doesn't end here. Next, we'll dive even deeper into stoic strategies for maintaining peace of mind in the face of life's uncertainties. Stay tuned, equip your mental Swiss army knife, and remember, the true power of perception lies not in what you look at, but in what you see. As the tempests of life whirl around us, tossing problems like tidal waves, it's easy to feel lost in the chaos. But fear not, for stoicism throws us a lifeline, offering strategies to keep our composure when the world seems to turn upside down. So let's explore some fun scenarios and stoic strategies to help us navigate life's storms with the finesse of an experienced sailor on the high seas of existence. Picture this, you're at the supermarket, your shopping cart is filled to the brim, and the line at the checkout is longer than the Nile. The person in front of you is fumbling with coupons and arguing about the price of avocados. Your initial reaction might be to let frustration take the helm, but wait, now's the perfect time to practice a stoic strategy. Remind yourself some things are within my control, and some are not. You can't control the checkout line but you can control your reaction to it. So you take a deep breath and decide to use this moment as an opportunity to practice patience, and maybe even strike up a pleasant conversation. With a fellow shopper, you've just transformed a tedious wait into a tranquil timeout, courtesy of your stoic composure. Or let's say your best, late weekend plans are wrecked by a last-minute work commitment. The stoic in you doesn't grumble or groan. Instead, you take a Marcus Aurelius approach, thinking, the obstacle on the path becomes the way. You perceive this unexpected work task as an opportunity to showcase your reliability in problem, solving skills maybe even to lead the charge. You've snatched victory from the jaws of a spoiled weekend, all thanks to your stoic mindset which whispers, embrace the challenge. And what about those moments when technology fails us at the worst possible time? It's as if Mercury retrograde has a personal vendetta against our Wi-Fi routers. A stoic, however, wouldn't hurl curses at the blinking lights. They'd see the downtime as a gift, a chance to disconnect and dive into a book or contemplate life's mysteries. Epictetus would nod in approval, knowing that you've chosen to focus on what's in your power, your choice to find peace in the unplanned digital detox. In a work meeting gone wrong, where tempers flare and voices rise, the stoic strategy is your secret weapon. Imagine Seneca in the boardroom, advising, treat your emotions like passing ships, observe them, but don't board them. By doing so, you stay anchored in reason and calm, navigating through professional squalls with the cool-headed tact of a true stoic sage. Coping with chaos then, becomes not a struggle, but an art. Just as a skilled surfer dances with the waves, the stoic dances with disorder, using these strategies to maintain an unshakable balance. So embrace the unexpected as a playground for your stoic practice. And if you're relishing these tips on how to keep your cool when everything else is heating up, subscribe to stay in the loop. In our next installment, we'll plunge further into the strategies and insights of Stoicism, proving that even in the 21st century, this ancient 
Philosophy holds the key to mastering life's mayhem. Join us as we keep crafting our stoic toolkit, because the more we practice, the more we realize that chaos isn't a pit to fall into, but a puzzle to solve. One that can strengthen our resolve, sharpen our wit, and deepen our wisdom. Your journey to becoming a modern-day stoic, a warrior of composure in the face of life's storms, is in full swing. Get ready to add more strategies to your mental armory, and together, we'll turn chaos into a chorus that sings our strength. Embrace the absurdity of control, fellow travelers on the stoic path. Have you ever wrestled with a jammed printer while it mocks you with a beep of defiance? Or perhaps battled with a stubborn jar lid that's apparently been sealed by Hercules himself? Ah, these moments are ripe with the comedic gold of life testing our resolve. But what would a stoic do? Laugh, and then let go. Yes, you heard right. Letting go is the secret move in our stoic martial arts. Consider the stoic practice of focusing on what we can control, like a comedic movie scene where the protagonist meticulously plans a romantic dinner. Picture our hero complete with color-coded itineraries, set to control every candle flicker. Yet, as fate would have it, the pasta boils over, the cat launches into the salad, and the playlist shuffles to polka music at the moment of the kiss. And here comes the punchline. Amidst the chaos, our hero takes a deep breath, shrugs, and joins the cat in the salad. That's stoicism with a side of spaghetti. This comical surrender to the uncontrollable is at the heart of stoic wisdom. It's not about giving up. It's about recognizing the line where our influence ends and accepting that some things, like weathering a storm in a teacup, are out of our hands. As Seneca would chuckle we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. So why imagine wrestling the printer into submission when you can serenely accept the paper jam as the universe's quirky reminder to go paperless? Like a cosmic comedian, life loves a good pratfall, and our attempts to control it can often land us flat on our backs, looking up at the stars in bewilderment. But it's precisely there, in that moment of surrender, where we find the freedom to focus on what truly matters, our reactions. Epictetus, ever the practical joker, would have grinned at our printer fiascos, reminding us, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it. That matters. And Marcus Aurelius, who faced a slightly larger scale of chaos, knew the futility of trying to control the empire's winds, but found his power in adjusting his sails. Imagine him on a capsizing ship, stoically moving his potted plants indoors while everyone else scrambles for the lifeboats. It's not apathy, it's the ultimate show of control over oneself. So let's raise our glasses, carefully in case we can't control a spill, to the art of releasing what we cannot command. In the next segment we'll continue to build our stoic comedy sketch, pepper it with timeless truths, and explore how embracing the uncontrollable can lead to a life of purpose and peace. Remember, subscribing is one thing you can control, so hit that button and join our philosophical sitcom. Stay tuned to Master the Laugh track of your life, where every slip-up is not a blooper, but a lesson in the blooming of wisdom, as we waltz with the ebbs and flows of existence. Let us now turn the spotlight onto the topic of embracing adversity, the stoic way. Picture adversity as the universe's most unpredictable stand-up comedian, delivering punchlines that can shake the ground beneath us. It's in these jarring moments, however, that the stoic resilience shines brightest, illuminating the path to turning challenges into winning punchlines in the narrative of our lives. Seneca, the sage who could find wisdom in a drop of ink, would urge us to face adversity, not as a foe but as a teacher who sharpens our wit. It's as though life throws us into a comedy improv show, without a script, without warning. We could stumble over our lines, or we could roll with the punches, crafting retorts that draw laughter and light from the audience of our daily interactions. Seneca might say, fire tests gold, suffering tests brave men. The heat of life's adversities has the power to forge us into something more precious and resilient than we were before. Consider Epictetus, who could find serenity in a storm, a man whose very life was a masterclass in resilience. If life is a sea, Epictetus was the skilled sailor who used the winds of fate to propel his vessel forward. He taught us that adversity doesn't break us, it reveals our true strength. Imagine facing a tidal wave of troubles. Instead of being capsized by panic, you adjust your sails with stoic calm, 
turning the gale into a gust that drives you towards your goals. And then there's Marcus Aurelius, the emperor who treated adversity as if it were the sandpaper that smooths the rough edges of his character. Even amidst the clamor of war and the whispers of betrayal, he found solace in the idea that each challenge carves depth into our being. When you next encounter an obstacle, channel Marcus and envision it as an invitation to sculpt your spirit into a more intricate masterpiece. As we embrace the philosophy of these great stoic minds, we begin to see that every challenge comes with a hidden opportunity to crack a joke at. Adversity's expense, that missed promotion at work, a chance to plot a new, more audacious career ascent, that failed relationship, a scene in which you play the lead, learning lines of self-discovery and growth. With a stoic's perception, even the toughest moments can be the setup for a punchline that will have your future self roaring with laughter. To fully embody this stoic resilience, we must keep in mind that the art of humor lies in timing and perspective. So, as we face the hurdles, life hurls our way. Let us laugh with the timing of Seneca, navigate with the perspective of Epictetus, and chisel our character with the precision of Marcus Aurelius. And in doing so, we turn our adversities into anecdotes, our trials into tales of triumph. Join us as we continue to dance through the stoic comedy of life, where each slip is a step, and every fall, a chance to rise with a grin. Don't forget to subscribe for more stoic strategies and insights that will teach you to juggle life's curveballs with the finesse of a season. Performer. In our next chapter, we'll delve even deeper into how stoicism can help us to not only endure, but enjoy the ride, turning every bump into a beat in the rhythm of a joyful journey. As we continue to sashay through the stoic soiree, let's now peek into the daily habits that keep our stoic superheroes grounded in their noble pursuit of calmness and wisdom. Imagine these routines as the secret ingredients to a life sprinkled with a dash of tranquility and a pinch of sagacity, the perfect recipe for a mind as serene as a Zen garden and as sharp as a scholar's quill. Seneca, with his timeless insight, might have started his day with what we'd now call journaling, jotting down his thoughts like seeds in the garden of his mind, knowing that over time, they would blossom into wisdom. Picture yourself scribing your own daily reflections, each word a water droplet nurturing the growth of your inner sanctuary. It's a simple habit, as refreshing as the first sip of morning coffee, that sets the tone for a day filled with purpose and presence. Epictetus, the philosopher who could find focus amidst frenzy, probably embraced the art of meditation, an ancient practice tailor, made for the modern stoic. Imagine sitting quietly, as if your thoughts were leaves floating down a stream, and you're perched on the bank, simply observing. It's a daily decluttering of the mind, a way to center yourself before the rush of the day's waves come rolling in. This meditative pause is like hitting the reset button on your mental computer, ensuring you start off operating at full capacity. And what of Marcus Aurelius, the emperor who navigated an empire's daily demands? He likely engaged in a practice we might call premeditatio malorum, or the premeditation of evils. Think of it as your mental rehearsal for life's potential hiccups. While sipping your morning tea, contemplate the day's upcoming challenges and envision yourself handling them with stoic grace. This exercise isn't about pessimism. It's about preparing your psychological toolkit to repair any leaks in the day's hull before setting sail on the open waters of life's uncertainties. But daily habits need not be all deep contemplation and somber preparation. Our stoic friends understood the value of humor and laughter as well. Perhaps Seneca took a moment each day to share a witty observation with a friend, or maybe Epictetus chuckled at the playful antics of a street dog. Incorporate a daily dose of laughter into your routine, whether it's watching a funny video, reading a comedic strip, or simply sharing a joke. Laughter, after all, is the stoic's unexpected secret weapon a balm for the soul, and a reminder not to take life's drama too seriously. Lastly, let's not forget the Stoic's evening reflection, a quiet moment before bed to review the day's events. Like a seasoned actor going over their lines, assess your performance. Did you maintain your composure when your computer crashed during that important presentation? Did you find humor in the spilled coffee that decorated your shirt? Embrace these reflections not as criticisms but as gentle nudges towards an even wiser tomorrow. In the next segment, 
we'll explore how these daily stoic practices can seamlessly integrate into your routines, transforming your every day into a living, breathing work of art. So subscribe and join our philosophical jam session, where each habit harmonizes to create the symphony of a life well lived. Stay tuned as the journey through the joyous landscape of Stoicism continues to unfold, one laughter, filled wisdom woven day at a time. As our philosophical odyssey wends its way through the Stoics' mindset and daily practices, we now cast our gaze toward the arena of human connection, relationships. Stoicism, often perceived as a solitary pursuit, holds within its folds a trove of wisdom for enriching our interactions with others. Imagine Stoicism as a relationship coach, not with a whistle and a playbook, but with a knowing smile and a trove of timeless insights. It's about injecting wit into our social fabric, threading camaraderie with clarity and understanding with laughter. Seneca, the maestro of metaphor, might suggest that relationships are like a dance, a harmonious movement that requires us to be in step, not just with our own rhythm, but with that of our partners. Stoicism teaches us to lead with virtue and follow with empathy, to know when to step forward with support and when to gracefully twirl into the background, allowing others their moment in the spotlight. It's the subtle art of being present without overshadowing, like a gentle harmony that uplifts the melody. Epictetus, with his knack for distilling profound truths, reminds us that in the grand theater of life, each person plays multiple roles. In the stoic play of relationships, we are called to perform our parts with authenticity, not to mask our emotions, but to understand their cues. Imagine responding to a friend's distress, not with platitudes, but with presence, to a partner's joy, not with envy, but with shared celebration. That's the stoic script for a blockbuster life, where every interaction is an opportunity to practice compassion and connection. And what of Marcus Aurelius, the wise and just ruler? He upheld that the threads which bind us are woven with the fibers of humanity. In the tapestry of relationships, each stitch is a choice to be honest and kind, to forgive and seek forgiveness. Stoicism doesn't ask us to dampen our emotions, but to channel them in a way that fortifies bonds. When disputes arise, as they inevitably will, picture channeling Marcus's equanimity, viewing each conflict not as a battlefield, but as a forge where the strongest alliances are tempered. Let's not forget that Stoicism also advocates for a dose of humor in our dealings with others. After all, who can resist the charm of light-hearted banter, the wit that disarms tension, or the shared chuckles that bridge gaps? Embracing a playful jest, a twinkle in the eye during a spirited debate, is the Stoic's way of reminding us that not every disagreement needs to be a duel of egos. Like Seneca's letters peppered with levity, our conversations too can be infused with carefree cheer, endearing us further to those we hold dear. So, as you weave through the network of relationships, bearing the stoic torch of wisdom and wit, remember that the quality of your connections is the true wealth of your existence. Cherish the laughter, nurture the understanding, and practice the dance of stoic camaraderie. And don't forget to subscribe for more life, enhancing philosophy, as we continue to draw from the well of Stoicism. In our following discussions, we'll delve deeper into crafting a life adorned with meaningful relationships, guided by the light of a philosophy that has traversed the ages. Stay tuned, fellow seekers, as we cultivate connections that stand the test of time, all the while marching to the beat of the Stoic drum, in the frantic digital age where notifications ding with the insistence of a demanding boss and screens glow brighter than a Grecian sunrise. The Stoic sits unfazed. Imagine a world where every buzz, beep, and blink vies for your attention, a coliseum of digital gladiators each competing for the emperors. Thumbs up, but, ah, the Stoic, calm as the still waters of a Roman bath, sees through this electronic frenzy, Seneca, no stranger to life's cacophonous symphony, would have surely chuckled at our modern predicaments. We are more often frightened than hurt, he might quip in a status update, and we suffer more from imagination than from reality. In the age where our digital devices can feel like an extension of our limbs, 
Seneca would remind us that indeed, we have the power to disconnect, and in that disconnection, find a serene oasis. Epictetus, with his sharp insight, would likely observe our enslavement to technology with a wry smile. We are not disturbed by events, he'd tweet, but by our opinions about them, and our opinion that we must be perpetually connected. Well, that's just a software bug in the mind, one that can be patched with a healthy dose of stoic programming. Imagine reprogramming your reaction to the ceaseless pings of your device, opting instead to view each alert as a mere suggestion, not a command. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor who likely faced his own version of information overload, would counsel us on the importance of perspective. As our inboxes overflow and social media feeds spiral into an abyss of cat videos and political debates, Marcus would pen in his blog, very little is needed to make a happy life, it is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. A modern stoic then, might find happiness, not in clearing all notifications, but in the clarity of choosing which deserve acknowledgement. So here we stand, fellow navigators of the digital tempest, armed with stoic wit, and wisdom. The next time your phone erupts with a cacophony of alerts, threatening to capsize your tranquility, pause and savor a silent chuckle. Remember that in the grand comedy of life, these are but trivial scenes, not the grand narrative. Flex your stoic muscles, and swipe away the unnecessary with the grace of a philosopher, brushing off a speck of dust from their toga. And just as you tune out the unnecessary noise, remember to tune in and subscribe for more satirical musings and stoic strategies. For in the next installment, we'll delve even deeper into the stoic toolbox finding humor in the humdrum and tranquility in the tumultuous. Stay with us, as we continue to decode the wisdom of ancient philosophy, to mute the discordant notes of our modern lives, turning the volume knob, down on stress and up on laughter, as we sail through the vast ocean of life, with its unpredictable currents and sudden storms, we inevitably come, across the daunting isle of decision making. Now, let's dock our vessel, and explore stoic decision-making, breaking down complex choices into laughable, what would a stoic do, moments. Picture yourself at life's crossroads, with paths winding into the unknown. Each route promises its own set of trials and triumphs. A daunting choice indeed, but fear not, for the stoic compass in hand, guides us with a chuckle and a shrug, teaching us to slice through complexity with the precision of Occam's razor albeit with a bit more humor. Envision Seneca in the modern world faced with the paradox of choice in a supermarket aisle, overwhelmed by fifty shades of olive oil. What would Seneca do? With a wry smile, he'd probably pick the middle-priced option, neither too extravagant nor too humble, and quip about the absurdity of our abundance. The secret, fellow philosophers, is to choose without becoming attached to the outcome, a choice made with virtue as the guiding star. After all, the best olive oil is the one enjoyed with good company and a sprinkle of laughter at life's little luxuries. Let's turn to Epictetus, who would encounter the daily buffet of decisions with the calm clarity of a monk. When confronted with a high-stakes career decision or the trivial dilemma of what to have for lunch, the Epictetus within us might chuckle and remark, it's not what we decide but how we decide that defines our character. He'd advise us to weigh our options based on what aligns with our values and then, regardless of the choice, to embrace the outcome with open armed, and perhaps a cheeky grin. And of course, Marcus Aurelius, stationed at the helm of an empire, faced choices that could alter the course of history. How did he maintain his composure? By simplifying the complex and always returning to stoic basics. Imagine him shrugging off the weight of his imperial crown and pondering, will this matter on my deathbed? The answer more often than not, brings both clarity and levity, trimming the fat of frivolous worry and highlighting what truly matters, justice, courage, temperance, and wisdom. As we apply these stoic laugh lines to our own decision-making tapestry, we learn to view each choice not as a burden but as a jest. Will opting for the blue socks instead of the black ones this morning lead to an existential crisis? Unlikely. Will choosing to stand up for a colleague in need echo in the halls of virtue? Most certainly. It's in these moments, when we play our part in life's grand comedy with a stoic's discernment, that we find both tranquility and wisdom. So, 
as you face the comedy of choices that life scripts for you, ask yourself, what would a stoic do? Then proceed with a wink to fate, a nod to virtue, and a hearty laugh at the wonderful play we're all a part of. Embrace the stoic way of decision-making, and watch, as life's complex choices become a series of laughable moments, each one a step towards becoming the calm, wise sage of your own epic tale. Remember to subscribe for more mirthful musings and philosophical guidance, as we carve our paths with the chisel of stoic wit and the compass of ancient wisdom. Stay tuned, my friends. Your journey to mastering the art of stoic decision-making has only just begun. Ah, virtue, the crown jewel in the stoic's treasure chest of life. It's more valuable than any viral video or trending topic. It's the currency of character, the true measure of a person's worth. But what would a stoic say about virtue in our modern times? Let's jestingly juggle this concept and see how it aligns with our quest for calmness and wisdom. Think of virtue not as a dusty relic from the past, but as the most fashionable accessory you can sport. It never goes out of style and it fits every occasion. Imagine Seneca, strutting down the avenues of ancient Rome or the virtual sidewalks of social media, always clothed in virtue. It's as though he's wearing an invisible cloak that shields him from life slings and arrows, all the while radiating a dignified allure. Seneca would surely make virtue go viral, crafting tweets that transcend time, reminding us that even in a society obsessed with likes and shares, the ultimate likes is the one we give ourselves when we act with honor. But let's not just idolize virtue from afar. Let's playfully poke at it, turn it over, and see how it fits into our daily lives. Virtue, dear viewers, is not about grand gestures or monumental sacrifices. It's found in the small, seemingly inconsequential moments, like choosing to recycle that bottle instead of tossing it in the trash, or offering a seat to the tired stranger on the bus. These are the snapshots of virtue that, when stitched together, compose the panoramic picture of a life well lived. Epictetus, that grand old sage of simplicity, would probably chuckle at our modern conundrums, pointing out that our quest for external validation often eclipses our own moral compass. What's the stoic antidote? To seek virtue as if it were the coolest trend, the one true path to peace of mind. Imagine internal likes piling up every time you make a choice that is just kind or wise. These are the moments that garner the most valuable currency there is, self-respect. And let's dash a dollop of delight into this discourse on virtue. After all, what's the point of being virtuous if you can't have a bit of fun? Think of Marcus Aurelius, in his imperial court faced with an entourage of flatterers and sycophants. His stoic sense of humor would have him coyly smiling, knowing that the only applause that matters is the silent clapping of his own virtuous heart. Picture thriving in a modern court of social media influencers, not swayed by followers, but by the steadfast beat of your own virtuous drum. So my friends, as we wrap up this segment on the rollicking role of virtue and stoicism, let's not forget to hit that subscribe button. It's a small act of virtue, supporting content that enriches rather than enrages. Next time you're faced with a dilemma, big or small, ask yourself, what would a stoic do? Then leap into action with virtue as your guide, and maybe a cheeky wink at the absurdity of it all. Our journey continues, as we wade through the delightful waters of wisdom, and remember, a virtuous life is a life sprinkled with joy, laughter, and the occasional playful probe into the essence of our being. Stay tuned for more stoic adventures, where virtue isn't just a lofty ideal, but the most practical joy-filled choice you can make every day. Emerging victorious from the gladiator arena of virtue, we now stride into the whimsical world of adversity with a spring in our step, and a chuckle in our throats. How, you ask, do stoics not just withstand but laugh in the face of life's chaotic curveballs? Picture adversity as the universe's slapstick comedian armed with a pie of misfortune aimed squarely at our faces. The stoic secret, they see the pie coming, and they're ready to turn that mess into a lesson with a hearty laugh. Remember Seneca's thoughts on hardship, he would have likely found humor in the gnarliest of Knott's life ties. Picture him standing in the midst of a tempest, holding his toga over his head as makeshift shelter, laughing at the fickle weather and at himself. For thinking he could outpace the clouds, throw me to the wolves and I will return leading the pack. He might have quipped, 
humor and resilience in equal measure. It's the Stoics way of acknowledging that while adversity may rain down, our spirit doesn't have to get soaked. Let us not forget our good friend Epictetus, who, with his leg famously in shackles, could have bemoaned his fate but instead found strength in the absurdity of his circumstances. He might have joked, they can chain my leg, but they can't contain my wit. By recognizing the hilarity in his predicament, he transformed his chains into a symbol of freedom, the freedom to choose one's attitude, to find the humor in the helplessness, and to rise above with a triumphant chuckle. And Marcus Aurelius, that bastion of stoic calm, faced with the weight of the empire on his shoulders, might have let out a wry laugh at the absurd expectations placed upon him, envision him musing to himself before a grand assembly, I am but human, and you expect me to govern the gods' whims? It's the laugh of a man who knows the limits of his control, who sees the cosmic joke and embraces it with a wise nod and a knowing smile. So fellow travelers on this stoic journey, when adversity knocks at your door, laden with its pies of misfortune, greet it with the grin of a seasoned comedian. Find the strength in the absurdities life throws at you, knowing that each one is an opportunity to showcase your stoic humor and resilience. It's not just about surviving the tempest but dancing in the rain with a joy that defies the thunder. Stay tuned and subscribe, for our journey is far from over. As we continue to navigate through the waves of wisdom and wit, we'll discover more about how Stoicism teaches us to laugh at adversity, turning every stumble into a step of the dance, every fall into a forward roll, and every setback into a setup for a comeback that's sure to leave audience, and by that, I mean life in stitches. Striding boldly into the present, we tip our stoic caps to the modern mortals who, consciously or not, tread the venerable path laid by the ancient sages. These are the folks who bring stoicism into the 21st century, sounds the togas, but with all the tranquility and wisdom. Now, let's affectionately roast these unwitting stoics of today, not under the heat of scrutiny, but in the warm glow of admiration. Take, for example, the intrepid entrepreneurs of Silicon Valley, those tireless titans of tech. They face the Sisyphean task of pushing the boulder of innovation uphill, only to watch it roll back with each new software update. These modern stoics, like Seneca with his unshakable poise, juggle burnout and breakthroughs with a smirk, knowing full well that their next big things could be one algorithm away from obsolescence. Yet they continue, code by code. Startup by startup, embodying Epictetus's mantra that it's not the lines of code, but how you write them that counts. Then there's the legion of minimalists, those paragons of decluttering who purge possessions like Marcus Aurelius shed distractions. They live as if each object they own must defend its existence in a court of stoic law. Does this spark joy or just occupy space? They inquire, echoing the stoic pursuit of simplicity. With each discarded knick-knack, they shed the weight of excess, finding freedom and a good chuckle in the vast emptiness of their echoey, sparsely furnished living rooms. And what of the educators, those unsung heroes armed with whiteboards in the Socratic method? Amidst the cacophony of ringing bells and chattering students, they stand poised like Seneca in the eye of Nero's tempest, imparting wisdom with the patience of a saint and the endurance of a gladiator. With each pop quiz and parent, teacher conference, they prove that the true test of virtue isn't written on parchment, but on the young minds they shape, often with more laughter than tears. Let us also tip our hats to the introverts, the quiet contemplatives who, like the Stoics, find solace in silence. In a world that prizes extroversion like a gladiator's victory, the introvert's preference for a night in with Marcus Aurelius's meditation may seem like an act of rebellion. Yet in their peaceful defiance, they toast to solitude, and to the realization that sometimes the wisest voice is the one inside their own head. So here's to the modern-day Stoics, those unwitting disciples of Zeno navigating life's marketplace with a shopping cart of resilience and a discount card for humor. May they continue to face life's shelf-stacking challenges with a nonchalant shrug, a knowing wink, and the occasional indulgence in ice, cream, because after all, even Stoics deserve a scoop of sweetness now and then. Remember, dear viewers, 
to hit that subscribe button for more playful prods at philosophy and its place in our contemporary circus. In the episodes ahead, we'll dive deeper into the Stoics' tackle box, baiting our hooks with virtue and casting our lions into the swirling seas of modernity. Stay tuned as we reel in insights and tales of those who surf the Stoic waves today, proving that Stoicism isn't just a philosophy for the ancient archives, but a lifestyle for the laughing, thriving soul of the here and now. And so, esteemed viewers, we come to the crux of our Stoic Symposium, how to stitch the sturdy fabric of Stoicism into the very lining of your day, today, existence. Let's embark on a playful and practical guide to infusing your daily doings with a touch of Stoic spice, transforming mundane moments into a parade of philosophic profundity ready to inject some stoic serum into your routine. First up, rise with the sun, and as you rub the sleep from your eyes, remember Marcus Aurelius's morning musings. He might greet the new dawn with a stretch and a smirk. Musing today, I shall meet the busybody, the ungrateful, arrogant, deceitful, envious, unsocial, and yet, he'd resolve to see the good in them, to respond with kindness. As you sip your coffee, Set an intention to navigate the day's cast of characters with the same benevolent humor. Take your commute, usually a dreary drone of horns and exhaust, and recast it as a Stoic's odyssey. Epictetus would likely replace road rage with a chuckle, observing the folly of getting angry at traffic, a thing as indifferent to your temper as the stones on the road. Your chariot may be a sedan or subway, but within it, you journey with Epictetus finding serenity between stoplights and meditation amidst the metro's hum. At work, when faced with an inbox as daunting as Hercules' twelve labors, channel Seneca, he'd advise treating each task as a chance to practice virtue. Respond to emails, not as an endless assault, but as opportunities to exercise patience, and when the printer jams for the umpteenth time, laugh and laud the machine's persistence in testing your stoic resolve. Even lunch breaks are ripe for stoic seasoning. Die not in a rush, but with the deliberate pace of a philosopher pondering the cosmos, or at least the salad bar. With each mindful bite, savor the simplicity, and, like our minimalist friends, relish in the joy that comes not from extravagance, but from the mere act of refueling your body's engine. And let's not overlook the power of a stoic pause, a moment of introspective pit stop amid the race of life. When the day's hustle becomes a blur, take a deep breath, and as Seneca might quip, mingle a little folly with your wisdom, a little nonsense now, and then, is pleasant. So step back, view the day's chaos from the balcony of your mind, and have a hearty laugh at the grand theatrical comedy of life, as evening descends and stars pepper the sky like sprinkles on the cosmic gelato of the universe, sit back and reflect on the day with the wisdom of a seasoned stoic comic. The missteps, the victories, the unexpected plot twists, all fodder for the growth of your inner sage. So, subscribe my fellow life enthusiasts for our stoic script has many chapters yet to savor. As you weave these threads of ancient wisdom through the fabric of your daily life, remember that implementing stoicism is no solemn vow. It's a vibrant dance, a playful experiment in the art of living well. The next part of our journey promises even more mirth, merriment, and, most importantly, mastery of the Stoic way. Stay with us as we delve deeper into implementing Stoicism, a fun, step-by-step -step guide on integrating Stoicism into your daily life, where each step is a chuckle and every guideline a gateway to tranquility and insight. As the final curtain draws near on our Stoic odyssey, let us gather the pearls of wisdom we've collected along the way. Picture us, the merry band of modern-day philosophers, having ventured through the hallowed halls of Stoicism, chuckling all the while at the irony and beauty of life's grand play. We began by donning our togas of tranquility, learning to appreciate the power of calm amidst the hustle of existence. Like a Zen master in a silent dojo, we practiced the Stoic art of serene acceptance, finding that inner peace is not the absence of noise but the presence of equanimity. Ah. Uh, the sweet sound of serenity, more harmonious than any symphony. Next, we navigated the Straits of Wisdom, where the Stoic Sage advice illuminated our path like a lighthouse guiding ships in the night. With each sage word from Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, 
We stitched their insights into the fabric of our minds, fashioning a tapestry rich with virtue and humor, proving that wisdom wears a smile and not just a furrowed brow. Along the way, we sprinkled our days with stoic spices, turning the bland bread of routine into a feast for the soul. We laughed in the face of adversity, learned to dance with decisions, and adorned ourselves with the timeless trend of virtue. With each stoic step, we discovered that the key to unlocking the treasure chest of a good life lies not in towering achievements, but in cherishing the simple, ordinary moments. As we bid adieu to this chapter of our philosophical journey, remember that being a stoic doesn't require marble statues or ancient scrolls. It's about embracing the jest of existence, finding the strength to chuckle at the pie of adversity thrown our way, and the wisdom to savor the sweetness of life's simple joys. So, subscribe, dear Stoics, in training, and join us in the laughter, laden lap of philosophy. As you step forth into your daily lives, arm yourselves with the Stoic shield of humor and the spear of sagacity, ready to parry whatever life thrusts at you, and transform it into an opportunity for growth and joy. As we wrap up, let this be both a farewell and an invitation to continue our fellowship. Be calm in your heart, wise in your deeds, and light in your spirit. Carry the stoic torch into the night, illuminating the path for others as we laugh and learn together. Until next time, remember, life is but a play, and we are all actors on its stage. So why not play our parts with a smile? Farewell, friends, and don't forget to live each day as the Stoics did with virtue, resilience, and a healthy dose of humor.